Let's log back onto the server Pegasus and configure a rule to block echo replies from the ping command or Internet Control Management Protocol traffic. All right, we're back on the Pegasus now, our server. And again, here are all of our rules and here's our catch-all, so to speak. But what if I wanted to configure a rule to block maybe, say, ICMP traffic, which is, you know, like people use the ping command. That might help me in protecting my server from ping sweeps if a malicious person were using network analysis tools or a ping sweeping tool to try to enumerate a list of servers and hosts on the network. So to get my server not to respond with echo replies to a ping request, I could tell IP tables to drop ICMP traffic. And I could get nitpicky and specify just certain kinds of ICMP traffic, or I could say all ICMP traffic. Um, so, you know, the sort of the Maybe the easiest way to do do it would just be to you know have it block all ICMP. So we'll we'll do that for now. Let's go ahead and add a rule that would do that. Um, and this is well, looks you know something similar to our catch-all rule. So I'm going to do sudo IP tables, and I want to specify I'm going to add a rule, and it's going to be to my built-in input chain, and I'm going to specify an action which will be to drop the packets. I'm going to specify a port. Um, and instead of TCP, I'm going to do um, ICMP, Internet Control Management Protocol. And I'm going to specify an interface. And in this case, remember it was ETH2. That's my particular interface. All right. And again, let me just list that. So IP tables dash L. If I list those rules now, now I'm also dropping ICPMP traffic. And this is my original catch all here. And there's nothing wrong with leaving this here, but. Um, you know, again, what if what if I were going to allow DNS traffic through, say, over port 53? If we're going to do that, um, here's where I would have a problem, and that is, um, you know, if if I add the rule, it would get added after this rule here, where I'm dropping all that traffic, and so even before that rule was processed, the, the traffic would be dropped. Um, but let's just just to show you what I'm talking about, let's do that. So I'm going to do sudo IP tables. And I'm going to go ahead and append. I'm going to add this to the uh, input chain. And I'm going to say the action I'll specify is to accept. Um, and I'm going to specify the port, transmission control protocol, TCP. And I'm going to use destination port. And if this were a DNS server, if I were implementing a DNS server, I'd need to allow port 53 and traffic to go through on port 53. So. I'll do 53, specify the interface, ETH2. It's the port that it would be listening on for host name uh, to IP queries. And so let me go through and list that again. All right, and so, um, you know, again, um, I just want to make sure that my, my catch-alls don't come before any other rules that I might be adding in other specific places. Um, in this case, you know, I have I'm accepting anything here over, you know, for DNS DPT domain, but the problem being I'm dropping everything, so that packet's going to be discarded long before this rule can be applied to let it through. So now I'm in a situation where I have to kind of reorder a few of my rules, and the way to do that, you know, they just get added on at the bottom here, sort of at the tail end of the list of rules in the chain. So I really need to kind of delete these two rules here. Once again, let me go ahead and, okay, so now you can see that all of my rules here are applied, but I have a problem, and that is, that, you know, my catch-alls are here, and I'm telling this, you know, this rule here says, okay, well, any TCP traffic, by the time a packet gets here, if it's TCP, just drop it, don't let it through, so even though I'm choosing to allow port 53 and DNS traffic with this rule, I'm accepting, it's never going to get its opportunity or never get a chance to allow that traffic through. So, therefore, my, my clients wouldn't be able to do host name to IP queries against the DNS server. What I've got to do is take this rule and move it up here. And these rules are added sequentially, you know, in the order that I specify with the dash A to, you know, append option. So, I'm going to have to use the dash D option to delete my two catch-alls. And then this rule here will move up to here, and then I can add my catch-alls back, so to speak. So, to do that... Um, I need to use the delete command. This is, you know, just good practice with that command. Um, sudo IP tables and then dash D. I want to specify the chain here, in which case, of which is input. And if I count it up again, so I have one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, and eight. These are the two I want to get rid of. So I'm going to get rid of eight, and I'm going to do a listing. And I got rid of that catch-all. So now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I want to get rid of seven. So I'm going to get rid of rule seven there. And I'm just going to list it again. And now I have accept, and you know, here's my, my DNS, my port 53. So all of my accepts, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, are there. Now I just want to add my catch-alls back. And remember that my catch-alls were, um, first off, unless, unless it corresponds to these recognized ports where my daemons are offering certain services on the server, I want to drop transmission control protocol or TCP traffic. Um, so to do that, I'm just going to do um, sudo IP tables. I'm going to append, specify my chain, and I'm going to specify an action, which is going to be to drop the packets. And I'm going to specify the port here. And it's TCP. This will be my TCP catch-all. The interface and ETH2 is the interface I want to apply it to. And also, in addition to that, I can just hit the up arrow. But I want to specify Internet Control Management Protocol, or ICMP. And that'll block ping sweeps. That'll block the echo reply on ping. And actually, it'll block all ICMP traffic. I, I could get pickier on that and specify just certain, you know, certain parcels or parts of Internet Control Management Protocol. But here, I'm just kind of blocking it all. So again, let's look at that and list it now. And if I list that, so here are my rules allowing for traffic through. And then these are my catch-alls, so to speak. So, configure that on the server. Again, let's go test it on the client. Let's log on to the client Galactica to test it. Alright, we're on the Galactica again, and I'm just going to try out all my rules once more. Try to do this as quickly as possible. Alright, so there's port 80. Looks good. Web traffic. And let's try FTP. Okay, so 20 and 21 look good for FTP traffic. Let's try secure shell over port 22. Alright, secure shell looks good. And let me exit out of there. And let's try telnet over port 23. Oh, if I could type. And let's try logging in now. All right, looks good. And finally, remember we had specified a catch-all for ICMP traffic to block ping. So let's see. Now, previously, when that rule was not applied, we could ping. We got echo replies. So if I were using a ping sweeper, I'd be able to, you know, pick up that server on my radar, so to speak, and start cracking at it. But now let's try ping in that IP address and see if we get an echo reply. All right, so the firewall is effectively, it's, it's getting a request for an echo reply over ICMP, but that rule on the input chain is now blocking um, you know, that, that incoming request. So things are happening the way that we want. Let's log on to the server Pegasus and configure rules to allow ping, but not other types of ICMP traffic. We're back in the Pegasus now, and let's look at you know, a few more configurations or rules that we might apply to IP tables. Um, and again, so just you know, listing my rules here. Um, here are my two catch-alls. Now that blocks all ICMP traffic, and after all of these are allowed, that blocks all TCP traffic. What if I wanted to allow ping? You know, in the last example we block ping, so nobody could do a ping sweep. But what if I did want to allow ping? Just say the echo reply and the echo request, but block other kinds of ICMP traffic. I'd pretty much follow the same principle, right? I would delete the catch-all, I'd add my new rule, and then add the catch-all back. So let's do that. And let's see our rule, how's it enumerated or numbered? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I want to delete the catch-all nine, so sudo IP tables dash D, and I'm going to specify the input chain, and I'm going to specify rule nine. And if I do that and I list it, all right, so now I just have everything governing TCP there. And so if I wanted to more explicitly control ICMP traffic and not just simply block everything, but maybe allow ping, you know, echo requests and replies, but, but maybe block other kinds of ICMP traffic, I could do this. 
Um, and so what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to, on my input chain, I'm going to specify this, uh, sudo, IP tables. I'm going to append a rule, specify my chain, which will be the input chain. I'm going to specify the port, and it's going to be ICMP traffic that I want to allow. And instead of all of ICMP, a specific kind of ICMP. So ICMP um, type, and this is going to be an echo reply. All right, particularly an echo reply. And the action I want to specify with dash J is going to be to accept those packets. So that would be input. Everything we've done so far has been on one chain, that built an input chain. But I also, let's say that I want to, you know, add a rule to my output chain as well. Um, that would allow echo requests. And in order to do that, I would just do sudo um, IP tables. And this time, instead of input, I specify output. I need to specify the protocol, uh, ICMP. And again, instead of all ICMP, I'm going to specify a specific kind of ICMP traffic. Um, and that's ICMP type echo request. So I can reply echo request and specify an action with dash J and that would be to accept. Okay. And what would that look like? And um, I'm just gonna do sudo and list the rules I have applied. So my input chain, here's all of the rules I have applied. And particularly, you know, ICMP traffic I'm going to allow an echo reply, but there's no catch all yet. So I'm not yet blocking other kinds of ICMP traffic. And then if I look at my output, um, you know, here's my output chain. In this case, ICMP anywhere. Oops, at two rules there. Let me sudo IP tables D output. And same rule, so I don't really need two of those there. Let me list that now. All right, so I have my input chain, my output chain, and I'm going to add my catch all back to input. And now later on, I'm going to want to configure output. And then if we were doing routing, then forward. This will kind of just give you an idea of the basic configuration, the basic structure of IP tables. Um, so to do this, um, remember the, the catch-all, it would be sudo IP tables. And I'm going to append a rule, and this time back to my input chain. And I want to specify a, a protocol and ICMP. And my catch-all here, um, you know, once I specify I, ICMP traffic, um, I can specify the action, and I'm just going to specify drop in this case. All right, and if I list that, all right. So after I allow packets here, if it's an echo reply, then I'm going to drop it there. Okay. So it's just another way of maybe you know tweaking or kind of polishing up the firewall a little bit. And we could go, we could go on and on with output, you know. I'm sure until I, I, I probably bored you to death there. But that will kind of give you a basic, a very basic rundown of IP tables, how it works, the structure, the syntax. You can get super, super fancy with IP tables. It's a very um, capable, you know, very, very robust, ooh, hate that word, but <laughs> overused. But it, it is a very capable firewall. You can do so much with it. And all these rules that we put in manually, you can put into a script file, you know, a shell script or something, and have it run automatically at boot. or you just simply call a shell script when you want to lock down certain ports and open other ports and so forth. So it's not like you have to type all these things in manually. As well, there are GUI or graphical tools for configuring IP tables and the firewall. But that's another story and maybe another time.